Sloss and Humphreys on the road. Muggins and cream, cream and muggins, straight thugging, living the dream. That, that's our intro. Fucking muggles. Tickling the clit inside your head to make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they said it can't be done. Do you have any information from the outside world? Um, In what sense? In that I'm so trapped in a two-hour bubble now. Turn your mic up. I'm so trapped in a two-hour bubble now that, that uh, I just feel like I've just got catching up to do. Yeah, have I... The, have they solved the conflict in the Middle East yet? Yeah, it's done. Done, sweet. Yeah, 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 we solved That's racism. Good. That's good news. And racism's done. All done. Class. All done. Bad news is, turns out the cure for all was just a genocide. <laughs> right? But yeah. It happened you... in the worst possible way. Mm. Um, 80% of the planet gone real bad. But no one's I've... racist anymore. There's no one to be racist to. I don't get me wrong. We still hate each other. There's still reasons. Mm. <laughs> like it obviously, it obviously look, didn't solve. We just look deeper than skin for that now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And while we're punishing the people who did it, it's still murder and dragging them out in the streets and stuff. So it's just an endless cycle of violence. Mm. And um, what's happening back home? Uh, well, I, so I stay in contact with my wife. And really? Yeah, on tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point just that. Call me traditional. You'll see it when you get home. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I call me new fashioned. I miss them. <laughs> <laughs> new fashioned. Yeah, that's very new. Nobody, not nobody, but very way more couples now, I think, love each other than loved each other 70 years ago. Oh, yeah. I, like, yeah. They're marrying the person that you met six months ago because they're pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think. Oh, you did do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I'm away, I my friends are my good friends are the ones that are aware that I'm just I turn off. Mm -hmm. That's the way I get through to her. Yeah, right. If you want to communicate with us, send us a reel or a meme. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> and, engagement, and then I will think of you next time I say a reel or a <laughs> yeah, meme. Yeah, yeah. yeah and but I'll just don't you. tell us about your life. I'm busy. Yeah, and I don't want to tell you. I, I, and telling you about my day won't do anything for me. All I want to do is fucking set my steam day, play Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. and just fucking. Like ch tune out the hours until I'm just back home. Oh man, how is that? And and not in a way of like I hate the tour or anything. Like obviously <sighs> the gigs are amazing, but the hours during the day uh -huh. up until the gig and afterwards, I'm like that's your me those, time. All of those could be sped up because yeah, you're in you're in states of engagement all the time. So when you get a state of disengagement, you don't want to then make engagement with people. Yeah. So you you do just entertain yourself, whether that's a book or a game or whatever. Uh, um, no, I back. I don't, I think I, I go through phases. I think my friends are very aware of when I'm home because I'll be messaging them. They'll be like, hey, how are you? And yeah. they're like, oh. Oh, it's, it's all right when I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel's back in the country and therefore in his own head again. Yeah. Like, Hello, everyone. I've returned. Did you see backstage at Huntingdon there was a postcard? I think it was Huntingdon. Postcards that they were like, send a, letter, send a postcard back home and just drop it in at the production office and we'll post it for you. Yeah. So you could just like, there was a pen there. Like you could just write a postcard to someone. I was like... I was there. You just sent so many death threats. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking. I know one will know who yeah, it's from. Cutting, cutting up the guy's newspaper, but the black I will fucking murder. Threatening you. the postman because uh, that's that, it. Postman Daniel, must read postcards. Daniel, just out of just out of curiosity, do you have a do you have Ed Campbell's address? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be far too. That'd be far too. The postcard, right? Uh, the postman must read postcards. You can't be a postman, get a postcard, and not read it. Like I don't know. There's some real strict rules, like especially in the UK, and I think it's still in America. The post is like a very like they take it fucking seriously. Aye, but a postcard, it's friends. not burn. It's there. It's like it's not been crisp packed on the table. Yeah, that's it's, anybody's that. It's a nine, you're not writing a private postcard. It's fucking every person that's handed touches gets to see your letter. Yeah, but I mean, even if I had unlimited, like you're time. not even gonna have a little peek, call your eye. If I had limited time on this planet and would live forever and I'd read every single bit of literature, I still don't think I could be persuaded to read, to read someone else's somebody's postcard. postcard at home from fucking Tenerife. I'm like, oh, man, what information do you want? I'll just tell you straight off the bat. Don't you, read it to me. You'd be such a square about it. What? Live a little, man. Read someone's postcard. <laughs> You're fucking going door to door. Like, you know what, as well? I was going to say mundane job, but if all the, if all the jobs... Yeah. 
postman's a one that I could just absolutely be content with, like cutting a boot. My postie's a very happy bloke. Yeah. I love my postie. I didn't think I've seen a miserable postie. Uh, he's just yeah. got his headphones in all the time. He comes around. Some, and he's really good. Sometimes we'll stand at the door, we'll talk for 10 uh, minutes. So other days he's like, I'll see you later. And I'm like, mm. I also appreciate a quick chat, my friend. Uh, my, my postman makes a fuss of my dog. Aye. Uh, to the point that my dog gets excited to see him. Good, good. Yeah. I doubt it's always the case for postman, where the, the cliche is. Well, if Gary Larson is to be believed. Who's Gary Larson? Cartoonist from like the, I'm going to say mid 90s. New York Times. He was, it was like before people had phones to be on while mm. they shat, there was a period of time where beside the toilet, at least in my household, was like little books of like Calvin and Hobbes. Yeah, because you didn't have a phone to read. Hagar the Horrible. Um, fucking. Because you, you end up reading the shampoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, I mean, you used to just have to sit on a. Set in a fucking toilet at home. Of mm-hmm. him. Why didn't I send the postcard? Like, they were there. Like, I could have wrote a postcard to my mum. Like, who would like it, right? I think my mum and dad would like it if they got a postcard off us. Mm. Me and Laws would like it. From from where, though? From fucking Huntington? New York State. Still got a little bit of something. New York State. Fucking, <laughs> 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 we the fucking way to have. We don't have Coke as Pepsi, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, Ricketts would love a postcard, I think. Rich yeah. Massara would love a postcard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, those are good shows. Do you ever wish you were more thoughtful? Yes. Uh huh. Because some this is how. Surely like, you gotta be the good. I uh, had the thought and still didn't act on it. Right. I, I wish I activated them thoughts more. Because here's the thing: Rich Massara is one of the most thoughtful people I know in the world. But mm. and I was about to. And the reason I'm bringing uh, is I caught myself thinking. Oh, you, you must have to be in a good mood all the time to be thoughtful. But he's one of the saddest people. Ah, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's he's got the black dog there wanting his attention, and he's still buying gifts uh, for people. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's how he expresses love. Well, act act of kindness, I think, would be a good remedy for depression. Yeah, if absolutely. You, like, I, I, like, yeah. work, anything fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the the it's not totally altruistic what he's been. <laughs> 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 shit wait look at something uh, uh, yeah I wish I was more thoughtful like there's often times where I'm like thinking oh someone like that and then right. just don't act on it at all do you not do it because it's gay huh do you not do it because it's gay <laughs> like at a base level I at I a base level I know I'm being reductive but not because it's gay no but I think this is why I'm setting a precedent for myself that I definitely can't keep I th- I That's feel- why I never wish anyone happy birthday on Facebook. I'm like, oh, if you day one, you've got to take the mile. Mm-hmm. So, because I do wish I was as thoughtful as like Craig Hill. Mm-hmm. Craig Hill's the type of person that will run, yeah. like he will be in another country, and even if he's not spoken to that person in X amount of time, he'll still he'll see something that reminds him of them or a private joke they have or a thing that they might like, and he'll just send them a little fucking message out of the blue there. Mm-hmm. Gay. Thoughtful, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not, not in a negative way. No, 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 but no, but no, but also acknowledging there is growing up in the playgrounds we grew up on where just being gay just was an insult, right? Oh, yeah, uh, imagine you come into school and give one of your mates a gift, yeah. Like, I, that, can, that, I like, I wouldn't be able to shake yeah. how gay I was by the amount of accusations yeah. that well, I would just homophobia, have to. Homophobia was suck a absolutely dick just rife to, in, in primary uh-huh. schools in the 80s and 90s. And even when you grow up and you become a non homophobic person and you grow and you fucking learn, you start with this really core thing, oh. which is just like one of the first things you Social learn. conditioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and gay, obviously, I, the, the reason it's is, is because you're reducing everything bad to that. But that is the, I mean. I, I often find myself, whenever I feel myself pulling back on something that is thoughtful, selfless, something that will make me feel good in the long run, something that's like a delayed gratification thing or something that's for someone else, I do get a thing of like, it's not that that it screams that in my head, but it's just this thing of like, I've been conditioned to not do. Aye. I do get the thing because you've set yourself up as such like a cold person at times, like the character of uh-huh. you. Like, do you feel like it's uncharacteristic to be nice? No, because I'm not. I mean, I'm I'm nice when I want. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
no, I'm nice when I want to be, and I'm nice people. Like you know, there was at Christmas time, I tend to go fucking all out for friends sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a gift you can't. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's that. Just open it if you want. I don't care. Here's a light. If you want to sit on fire, do you want a fucking present and a show as well? Fucking Jesus, got a fucking hundred quid gift. Not enough for a shroud. Here's your present because I'm married. <laughs> no. That's uh, like if I if I turn if I turn up at somebody's house with Natalie, uh, we're bringing a bottle of wine, uh, or we're bringing something, mm. flowers, whatever, right? And I just can't I can't add that to my own personality. Like when I went to uh, stayed at Matty's when I did the frog and bucket run, like I probably should turn up with a gift. He's putting us up. I'm staying at his house. I mean, not his fridge. Drinking these coffees. Yeah. But my thing is, the Boring. offer stands the other way. If you want to stay at mine, you don't need to, you don't uh, need to buy in. Yeah. Like. I, I mean, it is better to be that. I mean, maybe we just should be. And also, I will say this. I'm, if I'm in a bad mood, I will let everyone in a bad mood because we're friends. And I don't feel like I, I, I don't have to hide my emotions in front of my friends. Like I, you know, hide my emotions on uh, stage and shit. But you can still be miserable and thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Like, buy that fucking coffee machine. You did, eh? Right. It's four years ago, that now. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was fucking Vegas? <laughs> 11 years ago. Oh no! This no! This stag! <laughs> fucking white switch. There's a switch. Yeah. Jordans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What have I got you? <laughs> Actually, nice. Have I bought you anything? Um, yeah, you've, yeah, you bought me that. Uh, you and Natalie and Alex and so Paul got me that uh, signed Chelsea Champions League. Oh yeah. Final shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've gotten me oh God, probably some other really thoughtful stuff that's all the t-shirts and jump as I leave at yours oh speaking of which I've got one of your t-shirts <laughs> nah, just always going here so I should buy our clothes <laughs> um, maybe that's maybe that's what I'll do when I get home maybe like with all the fucking time off in my head I've got this idea of myself I'll just become an infinitely better person mm. because I'll have an infinite amount of time even though even though COVID proved that that was not what happened. Oh, I know. Even though that I have was... firm evidence of COVID, that, like, by the way, given an unlimited amount of time at home, uh, you will still not uh, better yourself. You think you're going to write a sitcom if you've got oh, a bit of time man. off there? No. The delusion. Up uh, here, I'm like, I'm going to be a different man when I get home. Uh, I, was, I was thinking, I was toying with the idea of uh, turning my phone off for a few days when I go back and just being, like, uncontactable. I'm not going to go uncontactable. I'll do... I'll take social media off. I'll be done with that, and I'll just have that on like the iPad that's in the in Kaylin's room. So if I want, to. <laughs> where's Daniel in Kaylin's room? <laughs> right. Can I do bedtime with him? <laughs> he's not sleeping. Well, of course, he's not sleeping. Like, <laughs> he's staring at the, the screen. Arm. Yeah, he's deep in the arm. Blue light. Um, just completely Irish. You feel it? Yeah, because he just has like a burner phone type phone, doesn't he? You know, not yeah. And now, and now that we know the Jews of tunnels, it's highly suspicious. Mm. What is he up to? Aye, what's he hiding? Aye. Um, I ran across the for, the fourth bridge. I'm saying I've done it as a bit that I ran across the fourth bridge, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. And if that is not the most Instagram versus reality experience yeah. that you'll ever have, you know, when you think of the um, the Golden Gate Bridge, you think of it as fucking glorious. And I guess it was well, a foggy I guess, day. I guess, I mean, like it would, it would no, be good views if the sun I was shining. The Golden Gate Bridge. I think of it falling down, being hit, Spider Man, any natural disaster movie. Uh-huh. Like I've seen X Men. Yeah, oh, bad things continuously happen mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, the Planet of the Apes run across it. Do they? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the newer one. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all right, like. There's cages on the side and then fucking suicide nets after that and mm. just congested of people just trying to get the perfect photo, but like actually just in congestion. It was like one of them moments where you're like, ah, it's better in a picture. But like I said, the view would have been good. Like I was looking out towards like Alcatraz and the and the co- like the coasts and stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, on a clear day, this would actually be a nice view. Oh. But it's it was just so fucking windy, man. Like I was running. I was, I was kind of knackered as well because... I was like, oh, I'll run across to the Golden Gate Bridge because I was chatting to Gene about it this morning. It was, uh, you know, when you run on a treadmill, but it lets you have like a visual 
run so you can go past the Sydney Opera House so you can go over the Golden Gate Bridge like that's an option that we've both took before and we've ran over it virtually Aye. Um, so I was like oh, I'm going to do that in real life not considering that even though you can see it it's there it's just you run towards it it just doesn't seem to get any fucking closer still on the treadmill I was still felt like literally did feel like I was on a treadmill and then I don't know how it caught us by surprise yeah. but you have to claim a hill to get to it mm. why would you not have to claim a hill like it, it's fucking miles up in the sky up and up. you're on the beach when you start how far down the suicide nets huh how far down the suicide nets uh, about uh, the height of this room maybe it's still got a bit of a fall I'm glad they're there because they're the number one they, all the survivors are like the, the, you regret it like the second you jump you instantly regret it people have survived that uh -huh. that's quite the fucking fall that would be like hitting concrete well, uh, like most most jumpers from anywhere who have survived which isn't a lot mm. uh, but do say like the num the second the ones, that burn, the ones that burn pewter just before they hit the ground uh, I don't know if that would help with water really or if you burn a pewter, I reckon you could land. If oh, if yeah. if a if a um, non missed born could land it, um, I think it's a great idea to have suicide nets, right? But like that's a sad spot. You land there, you forget. Oh, you forget. Then you can't, what are you gonna? How are you gonna get back up? All right. So hear me out. Suicide slides. <laughs> I like it. Right. So, so they're all like kind of funnel in the. So it's like down the side, and it's just like a catch. It's like over sort of spill, and it all goes down in the middle. And maybe it does. Maybe it does dump them in the water at the end mm -hmm. because who doesn't like a good water slide? Mm -hmm. But like, I just think that's and that might cheer you up as well. Hundred percent, absolutely. Spring in your step. Don't get me wrong. Suicide attempts will go way up, mm -hmm. <laughs> way up. People will be doing yeah. it. At one point, it's just going to become an attraction. But <laughs> in the middle of it, I think we can save some lives. <laughs> <laughs> one, one in every 100 people that jump off the Golden Gate Bridge is attempting suicide. Yeah, yeah, the rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's a will fund it. It will eventually just become a giant. If you are on one of them nets, I'm just putting it out there. If you are, if you are determined, Aye. like it's stopping your initial jump. But like at that point, you're going, right, this isn't the suicide attempt. This is me just getting onto the net. Aye. And then you'd clamber over the net oh, and yeah. then you would do your jump. You land so it is, it is putting like an extra obstacle yeah. in the way. Right. You land in the old cry catcher. Cry, cry catcher. <laughs> <laughs> the cry catcher. Right. Depressed people jump. Oh, right. Okay. I was just like, how, how's net going to catch tears? Oh, that's, I mean. Um, yeah, that would, that would be a shite way to end it, I think. Mm -hmm. Clambering out of a suicide net. <laughs> aye. Aye. Or suicide, or you fall, you regret it, you land in the suicide net, you're embarrassed for a bit, you shiggle about, net snaps, fall, die anyway. Mm. Oh. I wonder if that, like, small amount is enough for you to survive the jump. <laughs> the, answer, the answer's no. The answer's just no, it's too high. Oh, I also love, like, just, it's such a, I know it's around the world, but just when it's here, it's such an American thing, which is like, all right. People are killing themselves, so we're going to stick a net to catch the ones that do kill themselves, and then what happens afterwards? Oh, you know, we just release them. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you know, if you put any anything into mental health care at all, you could probably stop this problem at the source. How's that cheaper than nets, though? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. the net catches like 95% of them, man. Like, that's heaps. Uh, do you know how much therapy costs? Yeah, an, an extra, you're suggesting an extra 10 million a year, right? For an extra 5%. This is America, baby, no way. Mm -mm. And it's a quite a busy roadway as well. So you're essentially choosing to run alongside a motorway. Yeah. It's like fucking whatever, four, six lanes. I don't know. So you'd like... You didn't fucking turn your count. It, huh? Didn't turn your count. I wasn't looking in that direction. You didn't fucking glance over to the side at I any did, point. I did run. glance, but I didn't make a mental... You've, drove, you've driven on that road, okay. You tell me, was it four, six? Six. Definitely. So it's a three-lane road on each side. C confirmed? Yeah. You just say that? You're taking a 50-50 shot on being right? Down, down your mic. Okay. If not more. So why'd you ask then? Uh, well, I don't know if you know. As always, <laughs> <Justin's> thick as <laughs> mint. I've got no visual memory. Mm. I have to make an actual mental note in words. Uh, speaking of America, I went to see Civil War. And can I just say... Do you love it? I thought it was good. Yeah, that was really good. Um, and also not against it like i have to remind myself of like i've got friends over here i've got fans over here and i love it over here it's good to be over here 
But, in, but there is something about the fall of Rome that, like... Yeah, you, I don't, you, would you I, quite like it to kick off? I don't want to see anyone die. I don't think I would ever enjoy the death of someone. Oh, that's not true. The fucking uh, flat earther who attacked himself to the yeah, rock. Yeah, loved that. That was so good. Okay, mm. tell a lie. I do like You talk about life. the Queen's death every day. Yeah, I did like when she died. Yeah, that was good. Okay, so I do like some deaths. Mm -hmm. Or oh, Trump's death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we like, we're odds on to get that. In our lifetime, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 like a, a, like a tragedy to like a, to see yourself would be the only thing stopping it. Like you can, um, despite the many things I love about this country, it just would be I don't know interesting. I thought one of the good bits they did in the movie, and this isn't a spoiler, but just a bit where Kirsten Dunst's character said, like I remember, I thought when I was reporting about this in other countries that I was sending the pictures back. And being like, this is a warning, let's not do this. And now we're all just doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and Because there's a really good podcast by uh, Robert Evans called It Could Happen Here, which has been going on for about, well, ever, ever since January the 6th. And uh, it's about, like, there could be a civil war in America. And was there, a, what, did something specific happen on January the 6th or that just when it started? What are you talking about? You said ever since January the 6th. January the 6th, the January 6th, the storming of the Capitol building. Oh, right, okay. That's yeah. what I was. That's yeah, what I was January asking. January 6th, yeah, yeah, yeah. So ever since then, he's done this podcast uh, called It Could Happen, which is uh, just with the experience he has of being a war journalist talking about, you know, what it would be like in America, if it were, to fucking happen. And again, again, I'm not saying that I want it to happen. The death toll on the innocents would be through the roof. I'd watch a lot of the news, though. Mm. Mm. It would pique your interest. Oh, I'd be on Reddit a lot more. I'd probably re-download that. <laughs> That's where you get the good footage. Do, would you like to be a war photographer? No. Did you not, like... I was fascinated by their etiquette, because I, I know I was watching a film, but I was like, how much of this is just based on life? Do the war photographers just get kind of folded into the action the way they were? Well, I think it's more Or was like, that just for the film? Like, are they just like, right, you get there, better not fucking do this. And they're, they're like, they the were treated by both sides. Of the, like, there was, there was points where someone was firing indiscriminately, but yeah. there's, there's points where they were just seen as, like, not a threat. You're just here to... Yeah. Like, you're not on a side. Well, I think it's more like they have to incorporate the men because at the end of the day you can't rely on anyone sticking to that etiquette though in no no that, no in that you, you can if that's the fucking thing right because originally I reckon they were just like you need to get the fuck out of here and then our photographers were like well I'm not going anywhere like this is my job and you're not stopping me doing my job so that, they get, the, the army get trained to fold them in I think sometimes I don't know how I don't mm -hmm. know how good they are but yeah I mean there's I mean it's a real fucking legit job in it. and the fact that they do wear press shirts it is like it's always bigger news when a journalist is killed than mm -hmm. regular civilians in a in a war, mm -hmm. and that's because it's even though both are absolutely violations of the G Geneva Conventions. Like the, I guess one's collateral and one seems like oh well, I mean, which doesn't make sense to me because yeah, I know what a nursery is. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't need to put press on the side of a nursery. <laughs> you be like, oh, father, my, I mean, you just don't there consider might be journalists in there. You don't consider your enemy to have ethics at any point, do you? Like you, you don't. Mm. Although there is that story which I've told on the podcast a long time ago, and I will repeat it. Um, the World War One, when the the had cease like just an etiquette ceasefire so that they could eat, yeah. um, and then. There was cook fires coming from the German side and one of the British troops just walked over no man's land and sat down and had food with them. And the Germans didn't want to kill him because that would breach the ceasefire and that's when they have food. And they were just like wary of him and fed him and then he come back and had an hour for the Brits. And uh, I don't know, like that was in Guns of August or something. I, there was a book I read, a book World War One at the time. I was like, I love that. He, he was one, not bothered if he died. Two, trusted the etiquette of the enemy enough to accommodate them in that move i i think um having a lunch break when you're trying to kill each other is really funny you're like <laughs> fucking bah, 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 bah. oh it's 12 o'clock all right game off well i think there are some people that are just like they fucking love war and they respect it and they're mm. just like i'm gonna there are certain rules of this and then there are people like i've been fucking roped into this i don't like any of this country fuck this shit I'm like you know mm -hmm. yes uh Soppert was telling us about um because he was on the front line for many years 
he was telling us about sometimes the quietest lads just turn into absolute fucking savages in the field. He's just like looking at them going, how's that the same person? You know, and life's on the line and your team's on the line and everything. There's somebody that's like fucking yeah. anxious in conversation and a little bit within himself and then the fucking guns start firing and you're like, oh, okay, you were born for this. Me, absolute killer. That would be you, just yeah. meek in the, in the mess. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't look like I can, I can then do guns, much. Guns start firing. Go there. Tell everyone, eh, tell everyone to stop firing their guns because I can't hear the screams of my enemies dying. I reckon you would spend more time pretending to be dead than, <laughs> than running around trying to just fight the enemy. Just in the mess hall. <laughs> <laughs> One button undone because you've had two servants. <laughs> Man, I think I would be so useful in war if I could see. <laughs> oh yeah if my eyes if my eyes were better why do you think you'd be a good sniper or a good pilot well not that i just think i'd be i'd be gutsy enough to go out and die all right you reckon right uh, now you're doing a lot of friendly fire <laughs> uh, blue on blue a lot of blue on blue from me well yeah hey. um i don't think i'd come back from war no, nah. nah. nah, just meet some <laughs> the, the, hero, the heroes don't come back, man. <laughs> <laughs> heroes do there become compost. Uh, I thought you were just make go out, marry a French girl, stay there. Don't bother writing home to Nile at any point. Just start uh, fresh. <laughs> Join the enemy. Yeah, never learn French. <laughs> 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 just sacre bleu. It's and we did that cook right. Twenty years together. Just both of you so stubborn. Her not learning English, you not learning French. We know people like that that don't speak the same language as their wife while their wife's bilingual and then the kids grow up bilingual. Who? Luke Heggie for one. Luke Heggie speaks French. Does he? Yep. Uh, Ian Moore. I bet he does know a bit of French. I think he, he, wrote, he wrote about it in his book that uh, his family talk about him behind his back in French. Uh, Luke Heggie might not be fluent, but he's definitely... That's something. He's not trying to talk about him. I love, I love Cara. I mm. love her so much. Oh, if I'd learn a fucking second language for her. Nah. Nah. Not even so like, uh, only, only, only if like she was. Yeah, it would be very funny if you, like say if you're married into like a Vietnamese family or something like that, right? And they all speak Vietnamese when they see each other. And you just learn on the sly. Yeah. And you just hear what the in-laws have got to say about you in front of your face to your wife. That'd be a good plan. Mm -hmm. I might do it, actually. Which I couldn't learn. I've tried learning other languages before. Me too. I've got 15% of French in my head. I've got no... Uh, I was uh, on the drink with another comedian down in London, and uh, they went, oh, two seconds, I've just got to go on Duolingo to keep my streak up. And then I like, went on for a second and done a thing, and then went off, and I was like, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to learn French like that. I don't think I don't think that's how you learn the language just by keeping your streak up. Mm. I think you need to have like full on hours and hours of immersion. You can't just. I, I think like the app. I think the app is useful to like less than one percent of people that use it. Well, man, when when the man or the lady uh, does the translation and she says it in English, ask yourself how many people who speak English sound like that. And the answer is fucking next to none of them. Mm -hmm. It'll be the same with other people. You have to go to other countries and sort of immerse yourself in it just so you can hear the fucking accents and dialects. Oh, and do you know the worst for me? Because I, I try to do it with, what do you call it, Rosetta Stone. Yeah. So it's DVD-ROM. In um, 2011, and they decided that they were going to use like voice activation technology in 2011. Like it still barely works now. We ever put like fucking. It's getting better when you put captions on a reel, but it still misses every fucking fifth word or something, especially with my accent. Mm. Um, and I remember it was the word mujer, which me means woman. So they would go mujer, and then I would go mujer. And then it wouldn't let it, you can't, you couldn't like manually pass that bit. And I would just be stuck for like half an hour. I just fucking muche, muche, <laughs> like muche, 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 muche. And just trying in every variation of saying it. No, no. Tell you what, I fucking remembered the word though, didn't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the one bit that worked when I wouldn't, it wouldn't let us fucking move on. Uh, I think it's a very impressive thing. It takes a, deep level of intelligence to learn another language, mm -hmm. right? But 
how much of another language do you have to know to know when someone else from that place is stupid? Like, how much French do you think you have to be in to, like, hold up conversation and be like, okay, well, I'm definitely stupid in French, just in the fact that I'm unable to convey my ideas as succinctly as I would in English. And also my understanding of French is rudimentary enough that, like, I'm going to get 78% of this, but I'm going to miss a, a lot of fucking nuance. So mm. maybe this person is simplifying it down from for me because mm. they know. So it's like, at what point, how good do you have to be in another language before you get to go? Hi. You're, hold on. Like how hold on. You're a fucking idiot in your second language. Yeah, well, how many people that I've met on the road don't know I'm an idiot? Yes. Hi. <laughs> and they're just like, God, he really slowed it down and was just, you know, pointing at light bulbs and clapping. And <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem like an idiot at all. <laughs> um, I guess you... If you want to learn a language, you don't just want to be able to like get directions and order a meal and stuff because you're putting a lot of investment in. You want to be able to hold a meaningful conversation and not just base level. Because like most people can just do that in English, which is the so you got really which is the big you got to be you it's got the be, big obstacle for us. You got to be living somewhere for half the year to want uh, to do that, or uh, or or be in love with someone who speaks that language. What? If Cara woke up one day with brain damage, right, mm -hmm. and just because I flail in my sleep, <laughs> and for some reason she only spoke Spanish, would I learn Spanish? I just just pretend you know what you're saying. Yeah, uh, just do what you're normally doing. Don't look up from your phone. <laughs> I want your lingo. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if, like, you fully committed and you learn, like, you know, when you started learning Hindi? Yeah. And you're fully committed and you spent a bit of time in India and you fucking got it down that you could speak, like, f fairly fluently. And then you found out by speaking to people deeply that you have a really thick, brummy accent, the equivalent of. I mean, I'd work on changing a little bit, but it wouldn't upset me as much as. What about like posh, I, posh English accent, the equivalent of? I'd expect that. I'm, 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 You've learned the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would expect this. Uh, mm. I, I would be more mental if I sounded fucking rural. Also, I don't sound poor. I'm like a little bit fascinated actually that like because we would never pick up on the regional dialect of other countries, they don't hear themselves like we hear themselves. They have this perspective of fluency that we have now. So they hear themselves in different accents and stuff, but we never get to see anybody that we meet through that lens. We only get to hear them speaking well in English with an Indian accent or a Belgian accent. Belgian accent? The Belgian language? No, Flemish. Flemish, Dutch, a little bit of Dutch there. But like wherever you are, like whatever accent they've got is just the accent of that country applied to the English language. You never get to hear them as a fluent person with their accent. Like it would be so funny to like speak to one of your friends who's foreign, but like hear them how everybody else hears them. I wonder how much of a different like you'd see them in if you heard like the Babel Fish version of them. Just play, oh my god, you're actually fucking stupid. What is the Babel fish, by the way? It's the fish that goes into the ear of the characters in Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy so that they can understand each other in different alien languages. So that the book, can, it's a device so that the book can continue in English. Right. And then uh, the book space team just blatantly stole it and said they were stealing it. So it's like, oh, like a Babel fish. <laughs> Like that, oh, we're being smart because we pointed out the dumb thing we're doing. It's like, no, no, you're just pointing out the dumb thing you're doing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, I, I was making fun of you yesterday and it was with great... To my blame. face yeah. or behind Absolutely. my back? Absolutely, to your face. You'd never do it behind my back? Well, not never. But uh, if I ever have this behind your back, I've always made sure what I've said is <laughs> to your face. I don't think there's much left, to be honest. I'd be interested to know. I'd say, which, which stones did he leave unturned? <laughs> I'd, be absolutely, I'd be absolutely shocked if something got back to you <laughs> that you'd never heard me say to you. Uh, uh, maybe a compliment I'll get back to you one day. Uh, um, <laughs> I'll just wake up at me funeral going, I got you. <laughs> um... I was making fun of you the other day because we have six shows left. We've got Houston tonight, fucking Dallas, Dallas tomorrow, Austin, Austin, LA, and then two in Washington, and then a late flight home. 
And then I've got like four gigs for the rest of the year at the moment. Might add more, probably will not. Just going to enjoy some sweet ass time off. Baby due in August. Mm -hmm. Gonna move house. Uh, we'll maybe write another book. Uh, I'm just gonna be- Just do what you want. Oh man, I'm gonna get to making bread. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of just gonna be a real- boring. You're not gonna make bread. Gonna just gonna put real, that in there. Gonna be a real- Lying about making bread. Gonna be a real boring- Piece of shit, and you have to go on tour. Ha 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 ha. Not, not, not only, only, and not only do you have to go on tour, you have to go on tour with a tour manager, and you got to go back to like 150 seat venues. Yeah, and I'm gonna be staying at friends' houses, which actually I don't mind that. Like that, that's fine because I get to see them mm. and hang out. Um, no tour manager. I've got to do the Fringe Festival. Uh -huh. I've got to finish writing the show, uh -huh. which. I try not to let like the panic set in because it always gets written. But then I start going, is the panic part of the reason it gets written? Have you not just got to embrace that panic? Trust the process, blah, blah, blah. Um, the hardest thing about writing a new show is comparing it to finished shows that you've like performed and toured a million times where they've got all of the punchlines in and people are laughing from the like, minute you start or the minute you finish. And you like... You're there going, fuck, it's nothing as good as my previous work. But that's because you're comparing it. You're not comparing it to your previous work when you started that previous work. You're comparing it to your previous work when you finished that previous work. So I, I have to like really keep reminding myself, like, just as long as you fucking turn up and do your writing and yeah. turn up and do your shows, you're going to add stuff. You're going to. It's important ev to every hate everything you do, man. To what? Why it's important to hate everything you do. Because hatred's easier to do comedy about. Yeah. Mm. And also, you just automatically hate your show. So by the end of it, you're like, fucking anything is better than this. Aye, but you still know it's good because you hear people laughing. I know, people are idiots. You know, there's punchlines. Like, just, if you're just looking at it like, from a logical, non emotional point of view, you go, right, there's punchlines all the way through that show. Just and then you look at your notes on your paper and you go, that might not work, that might not work. But then you do it and you do a couple of ad-libs and then that goes in and you just start like piecing it together. You, you're never going to write a finished show in a one -hour. It's a process. I've got that ahead of us in like, time's ticking, man. I've got two and a bit months. And I say two and a bit as if I'm going to do anything with that bit. Like me. Am I... Am I gonna be coming back home with a massive work ethic in me, or am I just gonna fucking turn my phone off? Like I said, I, I have right. been putting notes on my phone though. Like when when stuff that is normally lost to the ether, when you're just enjoying your life and living in the moment, like fucking when you're not writing a show, I have been bringing out the fucking butterfly net and catching the ideas. I so I've got I've got some stuff that I've written here to unpack. But are you, not, are you not excited about, do you not wish you had that process? Are you not jealous? Are you not jealous that you've got that fucking bit ahead of you? No. I've the got, stress of that? I've got people saying to me, like, Kana's not saying it, but like, um, Marlena and then some comedians I've been speaking to, it's just about taking time off. They're like, oh man, it'll be six weeks before you get the itch. And I'm like, uh, you have no idea who I am. Uh, <laughs> I was, I've, I've heard that of a couple of people as well. Okay, I think it's going to be a bit bored. <laughs> Fucking absolutely no, not. no, not at all. Um, like I, I want. I look forward to getting the H back, and like, and I think we. I'll go on record here. We can do fucking bets. People in the fucking Discord can place their bets. How long until I like really want to do stand up? Because you're doing a handful of gigs as well. Like you say, you've got like four, so you're gonna get that. Like I think that'll satiate you. Getting up and doing the Vicar Street show, the Palladium show, uh, the one in the in Cornwall. And, and I'm doing one in Croatia. And you're doing the Croatian I? thing. So, so you're going to... Because you, you'll go on to them going, oh, watch me stuff again. And then, like, remembering it and then being glad you remembered it and people laughing and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember when that was funny once. Um, you'll get that back and that'll just, like, kind of keep the embers burning enough for you to, like... I, th I think, personally, I, I reckon I could easy take a year off um, and do it. Aye. Mm -hmm. I wonder how, like, you know, doctors and nurses and, like, vets and police officers and people who do, like, really important jobs that mm -hmm. keep society going but are also, like, super fucking taxing. 
Like our jobs are taxing in a way, but they're not. If we stopped doing it tomorrow, some people would give a shit, but the world wouldn't stop fucking turning. Yeah. Society wouldn't stop fucking mm-hmm. functioning. Well, we're a luxury. We're not unimportant. Un- we're unimportant. For the actual important people. Even though you've got to look at it as like the people who are working their important jobs are doing it so that they can watch stand up and entertainment. Not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those people doing those actually important jobs, the ones. And let's just say for the sake of this fucking argument, there's like. I mean, I'm, I'm recognised your standard nurses and doctors, people who are like, I'm underpaid, I'm overworked, but I do this because I fucking love this job and I think it's super important. If you were to give them, but like, I'll give you a set amount of time off. Everything will be fine, right? We'll cover your wages for a fucking year. How much time do you need off? How to... many do you think would retire? Um, no, 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 retirement's not an option. How many, if, if, if you're a frontline police officer, frontline doctor... All this stuff. How much time off do you need for a full fucking mental reset? No one full well that the one well, or two days that you get. I think there. one thing you've got to bear in mind. How does it compare to ours? I think the the work the workplace stress would be so much more than what we have to deal with. So I get I get that they'd appreciate the respect, but to get in a position like that, you're following a dream. Aye. Like that's an actual job that you've got to work hard to get. Oh, so, do, so to, to, to dismiss the hard work that they've put in to get there, I think they, I think they take a rest. I, I mean, it's hard speaking for somebody else when I've never walked a day in their shoes, but I reckon it would be months, not years. Yeah. Uh huh. I think I it would be some, like. It I reckon be, some of them would be weeks. Like I reckon, like a lot of the doctors I know, as much as they would fantasize about fucking maybe two months mm-hmm. off or whatever, just like that, really good need to want to help mm-hmm. people but um, like it, like it would be nice to, in any job like that for somebody to come back and go oh yeah i love teaching i, d- I do remember i love teaching i just forgot about that because i was just so fucking swamped by it in the moment i think you should give everyone that option right mm-hmm. you can either have you can have either have like five or six two three day extra holidays throughout the year you can extend your weekend by two days six times throughout the year Oh, maybe we take up to 10, right? We'll take 10 times a year, you can extend a weekend, however long you want. Or one month of the year, completely fucking off. Completely off. Yeah, so you can have a four day work week, or you can have a. Or what did you say, a full month? Full month off every So year. you can have a four, four day week work, or an 11 month work, yeah. Well, let's go to. Oh, no, for the sake of Because you get an annual leave as well. It it's, should be a four week. I, I, first, let's say four week day work day, week is standards just mm-hmm. because and your annual leave doesn't come into play with the extra month you get off you just have to pick a month Aye. and you've still got annual leave for the rest Aye. of the time what do you reckon most people are thinking i think i would have when i was working five days a week as standard i think i would have took the month yeah uh-huh you could do more with a month yeah and uh i'd either pick i'd probably pick a summer month you'd pick december Probably pick December. Right? Yeah, you you take that off. Or January. Mm-hmm. Just fucking let everyone else have the miserable month. Aye. Halfway through December to halfway through January. Come back in two weeks after everyone else. I'm like, alright losers, what did I fucking miss? Also happy new year, happy new year, happy new year. That's one thing with our job, and in fact not just our job, anybody self employed, you don't get any annual leave. Yeah. There's no annual leave, there's no sick pay. Well that none. was the Really interesting, but and Natalie started up her business, becoming successful, and then just not being allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Well. Uh-huh. Like, I'll oh, fucking teach you for having ambitions, won't it? Let's be five holidays a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed. Um, I think ideal world for everyone, right? You go three day work week or four day work week, right? But most of those can be two of those are at home. Only mm-hmm. two or one need to be actually in office. Let's say one in office. Uh, everyone on universal credit, right? Mm-hmm. Standard, which is just a livable wage. Yeah. And then every, and then and then all wages of fucking because everyone's on universal income, all wages of jobs are drastically fucking lowered, mm-hmm. like by tens of thousands, because all of it is just for extra income. Uh-huh. So it's like you're doing it for your luxuries. You're working for your luxuries, not uh, your needs. So you're happier when you're going to work because you're working for something that you can see. And you go, oh, but how would you do this? And you would be like, mm, you know, if you just tax the billionaires, it would spread really fucking thinly across the bottom of society. And then you'll get a bunch of people who make thirty grand a year going, I might be a billionaire once. You're not taking my money. 
and giving it to them. They'll just spend it on cigarettes. No, they're yeah. just they're just taking my money and spend it in the shop down the road, which is also getting taxed. Oh. <laughs> like if the circle continues, because I've always said that, like you know, if you're giving people money and then they're not working, like on benefits. In fact, even the fact that they call it benefits is gross because it used to be, it used to be called income. No, no what is it called? So, um, not universal credit. Income social support. Social support. Oh man, this is about like. It's, it's a shame that it's not just a regular conversation we're having and it's an actual recorded podcast. Aye. Um anyway, it had a it had a nicer name that suggested this I'm fucking I'm I'm screaming at the podcast, yeah? Yeah. It's a it had a nice name that just suggested you are being supported in right, by right. society. Right, and now it's a benefit. And then you like scre you're screaming at them people for like fucking being on it when actually they're the, the, I'm, I'm just repeating myself again. Am I high? Oh, I mean, it's, uh, it certainly sounds like it. I don't think I'm high. Uh, you've not been smoking today. Nah. nah. <laughs> not a bit. Not a drop. <laughs> Sorry about osmosis. I'm, I'm doing, I'm literally not drunk, not high, doing what we're talking about again in the middle of talking. I'm talking about well, forgetting words. getting universal credit working. Um, just because I think that, that I, I, I do agree that like the rich people managed to convince us like oh all these people need to they're not working to live and it's like mm -hmm. oh man that shouldn't be the standard you shouldn't have to work to live you should you should just be allowed to fucking live and also if you are living and doing nothing to benefit society we are allowed to go on those fucking layabouts mm -hmm. fucking pieces of shit but you don't but you don't want to be in it. their shoes because they're not going on holiday they're not, they don't have nice things they don't have a nice car they don't have yeah. like and if they do it's at the compromise of their food how much? How much do you give them? How much do you give them? Universal credit. To to stop to stop people going on like I've just said to go on. Um, give them fucking tokens that they can spend. Give them a house. Give them fifty grand a year. Mm -hmm. Fifty uh, grand. A year. <laughs> yeah, you're sorry to touch. Fifty grand a year. If you're a fam <laughs> family, a family of four, are, family of five. This is how it, how it touch you. It's probably it's probably a bit like. I reckon my parents would have had to work for fucking three years to get that kind of money. And, and well yeah, working. Back in yeah, the 60s, 70s. 50 grand a year. No, I'm, I, yeah, you're really... 50 grand a year is a really good qualified salary, Daniel. A double income house at the moment is is in a middle class family is about 120. Nah. I reckon, I reckon you're, you're, ta you're talking about like minimum wage. You're talking about covering... People's people, people's need for minute. If you were, if you were, thirty grand can that's not enough to live on. Th thirty grand, like well, uh, I guess they're paying for a mortgage in that. If I've given them a free house, I'll take that on board. Yeah. Okay. Nah, I th I think you're you're way out of touch with uh, what people can get by on when you when your regular guy just goes out and works like in the fucking like just whatever sweeping the streets or right. in the factory or lollipop man lady like fucking whoever whoever you're talking about is making 11 pounds an hour mm -hmm. and then they're gonna get the first 12 grand tax free and they're probably what's not the gonna average? make they're probably not gonna make much more than that I, don't, what's the I, I feel like i'm a little bit out of touch it's been a fucking long time since i've been in that world but the minimum wage is 11 do 11 times 37 times 52 and that's what your minimum wage person's getting average income Yes. Okay. So, so yeah, it's thirty grand a year. That is thirty grand. Yeah. Huh. There you go. I know it's right. That can't be right because I was on nowhere near that, and minimum wage hasn't went up that much. It's kind of a bit, but yeah, like, and and minimum wage at thirty grand is not enough for most people to fucking live yeah, an actual not. life on nowadays. But I didn't know minimum wage was thirty grand. Uh huh. So if you give somebody a house uh -huh. and still give them like a job that pays mm. 50 grand. Uh, you know, if you, like if you two, want to put a gun to my head and say, what is a minimum wage person getting? Yeah, I thought it was like 15 grand. Uh, no, no, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, good, I'm glad because I'm, I'm doing it wrong. I'll concede when I'm out of touch, but I was like, mm -mm, times are hard now and people are around more because inflation is fucking shitty. Inflation is quite shitty because... And the price of a Freddo isn't what it used to be. <laughs> I mean, uh, we are becoming that. Yeah, well, that, but that's what it is. Like, I've, like nobody, nobody's got richer, even though it's 30 grand and maybe it's, I'm, I've been the one out of touch like because I would have been making 12 grand yeah. or whatever when I was working. Uh, 
So it has doubled since I was in that life, but the fucking costs of life have more than doubled. So everyone's got poorer than what I was when I was on that money. So what would you give them? House and, house and fifty grand a year. If if it's if it's just like a base income, just for to to put you up, whatever whatever that fucking minimum wage cost of living is. But then again, every, everybody has to get it right, so that when you work a minimum wage job on top of that, you're doubling your income and you're going to be on sixty grand. So that's yeah. what you're asking. But would that be plausible financially if we're capped billionaires yes. at a billion yes. and and the rest of their billions go into the yes. pot and they get their prestige yes. points like what we talked about on yes. a previous podcast? That would be absolutely available. Achievable. Very achievable. And then some. How many people would just not work? Would society work? Let's think about it like on the larger scheme. There'd be a lot of people that would just go, Oh, cool! I can have a simple life. Uh -huh. I don't have much more needs other than my basic needs for food for my family. Uh -huh. And those people can do the bonus jobs that are like research mm -hmm. and journalism. But would you would you not make... would you not get the like knock on effect of like now you want to go to the shop and buy a, a meal deal, right? But there's nobody working at the shop. There's nobody working in the factory packing the sandwiches. There's nobody. Like all, all the lines that have industry that got that meal deal from the people making the plastic bottles, uh -huh. like to you, there's just so many holes in that line the, that, the, the, that now you can't get that. So the price of that rises and now all of a sudden, no, it goes down because all of, all of a things, sudden the meal deal is like fucking 15 quid. All the cutting up, all the everything is done by machines, which is instead of like 60 people doing it, it's overseen mm. by four people. Mm -hmm. Like it does mean giving into automation mm -hmm. and stuff, but, everything. but at the moment we're giving into automation so the companies become richer. The thing that fucked me off the other day back in the UK and that, that this is disgraceful. Went through big shop, right? Came to about 120 quid, right? It's gonna last Cara. Social oh. Security. <laughs> it's called Social Security. Social Security, there you go. <laughs> uh, get out and he goes, Do you want your receipt? And I'm like, No, I don't want my receipt. I don't want a random fucking bit of paper. That it's just gonna get lost in a bag and thrown in a fucking bin. I'm fine. So I don't take, take my receipt and just leave it there. Uh -huh. Go out. And there's a fucking gate that you need to scan a fucking barcode on your receipt to get out. And it's like, absolutely not. If shoplifting's that bad, increase the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. That you don't get to do this to everyone else. You don't get to be like, oh man, there's no way, there's no other way to solve the crime in mm -hmm. the area. There's no way to stop people stealing necessary items mm -hmm. uh, because they, they can't afford it. So we're just going to make, oh. Where, where was this? Is Sainsbury's. It, a fucking that back Sainsbury's. Home. Yeah, because I saw... Um like a inspirational quote type meme saying if you saw if and I did enjoy it because it said if you if you see someone stealing food no you didn't yeah like in uh, different if someone's stealing food you're not grasping on them nah, nah. morally wrong mm -hmm. this is my food aye and in which case I mean yeah. actually fine have, have my food I guess aye, 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 well, I'll I'll get over it pretty fucking quick I've I've been shown like a um. Uh, I'm mean, an algorithm on my fucking reels, which is like uh, guys and their girlfriends going out for food, right? And the girl will order one thing, and the guy will order something else, and it's just the girl, obviously, and he's just, he's filming. And the girl's like, "Would you get?" And he'll tell her, and she's like, oh, "I got this." And he's like, "Cool, is it nice?" And she's like, "Yeah." And the girl always eventually wants a bite of the guys and he's like well why don't you fucking get it and the whole thing is like oh why can't women just pick what they want and I'm like man you know share something with your partner uh, <laughs> like, uh, is that one of the benefits of being in a fucking relationship is the fact that like you both get two different meals and you're like oh that uh, one's dead good this one's dead good why don't we try bits of each other oh you prefer this one that's fine i can stomach that one yeah i'll i'll work like and i, I get this from natalie i don't think i've done this previously but like i'm all on board with it is uh you workshop which two meals you're going to get between you yeah and try them both like if even even something like fucking ice cream if you've got a particular favorite flavor mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I can't imagine a world where I'm not sharing my favourite flavour of ice cream with my wife. With Like, that's just one of those fucking odd things on, like, I, I occasionally get shown of, like, relationship reels. 
And I think it's like the opposite of what Tinder is. For like people in, people who were in relationships when Tinder came out were always like, can I see it? Can I see it? Can I just see what it looks like? Can mm -hmm. I go on your Tinder and say, because uh, uh, it was this fucking new thing and they're never going to fucking experience. Mm -hmm. Whereas reels of insecure people in relationships and talking about things that uh, they get wound up in fucking relationships. I'm like, thank fucking God I'm uh, out of there, man. Uh, yeah, there's there's so many like fucking memes and reels that just don't land with us because it doesn't make any sense to us. Um, like any anything to do with like fucking jealousy and loyalty and trust and all that, you're just like, all right. I guess, I guess I guess I guess these guys have got a fucking struggle on their hands that I'm not part of. Do you reckon you could still pull? Could I? Hi. I reckon that I would have no motivation. Aye. So that would could be that that would get in my way for one. But like I do feel like I have a lot to offer. So I I would. I wouldn't consider myself unpolable. I don't know how, I, like, I, I, as with what you were saying earlier, like, how in touch with everything are you in the world and current events? And, like, in terms of, like, memes and stuff, like, all the funny stuff on the internet, I reckon if I were to go out on a date, mm -hmm. I would be way more fucking boring to talk to them. Oh, like, man. Unless, unless we were able to just stay on stand-up. It, it would be so hard. like you don't know, like say, and by the way when I talk about stand up as, as everyone on this podcast is aware it does get fucking boring uh -huh. so again am I realistically now like sure minor celebrity right successful right if we throw those things to the sides which you can eh, am I a good date by itself now yeah I think it, I think it would make it interesting but it would make it out of touch as a fucking proved of the conversation that we just had completely out of touch with the fucking real world because we haven't had a normal job for fif were, 15 actually. 15 plus years <laughs> you actually were oh. <laughs> devastated man, <laughs> man of the people hey. this is the man of the people here um fucking I haven't had a fucking pr proper normal job work life balance for fucking 15 years being on a fucking in a tour bubble for two years it, being in a parent bubble for two years uh -huh. God, it, man i've got nothing it would it, like i think it would be interesting like you're looking at something in a zoo oh, rather yeah. than interesting this compatibility more well, just like what the fuck is this human being in front of us what's your, a, what's your story i'm intrigued but i used to have a joke that i could never get fucking working but i do f f it, it's very funny that it's now come true in my older age I was like 21, 22 when I was doing it, which is like people in relationships are, uh, are like lions or like predators in a zoo, <laughs> right? Watching all the people go past, being like, man, if I was out there, I'd be fucking hunting everyone down. I'd I see. Be, Smash that. Yeah, oh, I'd be fucking, you'd be dead, you'd be dead. But if you release any captive predator into the world, they die within three fucking uh, days. <laughs> like, get back in the cage. Die. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that is exactly what people in relationships are like. I am very much a lion that's like, what a cushy life I have mm. in this 10 by 19 square. <laughs> I don't need much more. I've got my little drippy pool there. I've got my lovely ball there. People bring me two meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> I, We're I, on cue with pleasure. If I could like look at look into a crystal ball and see a world where I was single again, like I'd smash that crystal ball yeah. and pretend I didn't look at it. I'd here's be like, thing, oh no. Here's the thing, if twenty one or twenty two or twenty three year old me were to turn up and hear me talking like this, he'd be so fucking devastated. I got it. And I'd be looking at him being like, Why do you think I give a fuck what you think, you twenty three year old piece of shit? Mm. I know exactly who you are. <laughs> like oh, man, your opinion is worthless to me. Mm -hmm. And you'd be with like your new date, and every time they try to plan something, you'd be like instinctively going to ring your wife to try and organise the plans. <laughs> 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 I don't I need a second opinion. I've relied on the second opinion for fucking so long. Come back, come back from the date, man. I've got nobody to debrief with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just fucking sad there. Just keep ringing your ex-wife and that. Phone Jean up for old time's sake. Oh God, poor Jean. If I ever got divorced, they might probably be on the phone to her. Mm -hmm. Poor Eric. Uh, <laughs> say fucking my wife's on the phone to Daniel again hi no 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 he doesn't say much he just cries mm -hmm. no, I don't think she'll take him back <laughs> it's so funny that um, the other night might have even been last night I was lying like right on the edge of the bed and I was like oh this is kind of cute like I'm lying on the edge of the bed like I would at home because like my wife and my dog take up a lot of the bed and I've just come to that and I was like 
Oh, no, but it's because of the fucking two of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally because of the two of us. Because I've never had that in hotels before, all the way through marriage. Oh, yeah. But uh, after the two of us, like, I've just kind of been cuddling up on, like, the fucking, the smallest bit of bed. Still shocked how good a sleep that was in the two of us. It was such a good sleep, and I think that's why I've been emulating it. It's like you're camped in. Um. All right. We'll go do a show in Houston for anyone becoming a shows in Texas this week. Thank you so much. There are still some tickets left for LA and there are a couple for the early show in Washington. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, my tour is on sale, so just buy tickets for that so I can be more inspired to write it, which I, I feel like it's going to be good. I am motivated. Uh, and you know how I can tell I'm motivated? I've been doing all the other stuff, like going to the gym. Oh, he's gone. He clocked off the podcast a minute ago. Uh, I'll see you soon.